welcome to American Honey and this episode of Honey Bear's Kitchen. Together, we will learn to cook. Welcome back to another episode of Honey Bear's Kitchen. I hope you're having an awesome day. My day is going to be fabulous because see we have meatloaf and mashed potatoes lined up for dinner tonight it might not seem special to you but it's one of my favorites it is the greatest meatloaf in the northern hemisphere you've got to try it let me show you what it's all about so this is what goes into the most fantastic meatloaf ever first the meatloaf itself is made with one and a half pounds of ground beef two eggs one small finely chopped onion three quarters of a cup of saltine crackers now if you don't have saltines you can't substitute something else like no using graham crackers or something goofy like that one fourth teaspoon of pepper one and a half teaspoons of salt and three quarters of a cup of milk and then for the sauce that bakes on top of the meatloaf it's one cup of ketchup and one pack cup of brown sugar let's mix it up so ultimately we're going to mix the whole meat mixture together in a bowl before we put it in the pan so i'm going to start with the ground beef if you can find beef in these packages at the store, do it. They're vacuum packed, so there's no air inside and they'll stay in the freezer for a long time. So you can uh, have extra ground beef on hand because we, we use ground beef and everything. So I'm gonna put them in the bowl. Like I said, I'm only using a partial of the second one because it's only one and a half pounds of ground beef. All right, and then we, we dice up the onion. Then we add the onions to the bowl. Here comes one of the fun parts. We have to smash up these saltines. I'm going to put them in a Ziploc bag and pummel them with a small sauce pot. Let the games begin. My dog has anxiety and she's looking at me like, what's going on? We just need three fourths of a cup. I did way too many, but we'll just save the rest of them. Put that in the bowl. Add three fourths cup of milk. All right, it's coming together. I'm gonna crack in two eggs. As is always my philosophy, I'm gonna eyeball the pepper. And one and a half teaspoons of salt. And then you mix it up. I'm gonna try to use a spoon, see if we can mix it good enough. If not, you gotta get in there with your hands. All right, the meat's mixed. We're gonna set it aside. We're gonna work on the sauce. It's so easy. It's the easiest thing yet. One cup of brown sugar packed and one cup of ketchup. That's it. Go, a cup of ketchup going in. And then we're gonna whisk it together. And then from there, we've just gotta put it in the pan. The meat goes in first. Just spread it out so it's even and flat. Pardon my meatloaf pan. It was probably my grandmother's grandmother's pan. So it's baked a lot of meatloaf and it, it shows. All right, and then you just dump the sauce on top. And then we're putting this meatloaf in a 350 degree oven for an hour and 10 minutes. Here we go. So while the meatloaf is in the oven, we have plenty of time to work on the potatoes. As you can see, I've already been working on the potatoes. I actually peeled these, washed them, and chopped them as Honey Bee and I were watching TV last night. You know, we don't watch a lot of TV, but last night after the kids went to bed, I sat down in front of the TV with Honey Bee and a pile of potatoes, and that way they're ready to go for today. Preparing potatoes ahead of time is a huge time saver, but there's a trick to it. You can't just chop them up, put them in the fridge, you gotta cover them with water and then take a vitamin C tablet and crush it up, dissolve that in water and then add that in and mix it all together. To tell you the truth, it could be that the vitamin C does nothing and somebody just told me that, but they look great after being in the fridge all night. So I'm gonna go with the vitamin C does something. I don't know what it is. Maybe someone with a chemical engineering background can tell me what the vitamin C does. Who knows? First, we gotta drain the vitamin C water off of the potatoes. Then I'm adding the potatoes to a large stock pot. Then we cover the potatoes with fresh water. Once the potatoes are taking a bath again, you cover them, 
turn the burner on high and that has to come to a boil. And you boil the potatoes until you can easily pierce them with a fork. Now you saw that I had chopped the potatoes into really small pieces. The smaller you go, the less time this step will take and the sooner you can get to mashing them. These potatoes are there. After it started boiling, I took the lid off and they've been at a rolling boil for close to 30 minutes. If I take a potato out, it just, I mean, it, it falls apart when I poke it with a fork. So we're ready to go. I'm going to drain them into a colander in the sink, and then I'm going to return them to that large bowl that I was using earlier. These potatoes are steaming hot. We're going to use that heat to help us melt the butter. It's a stick of butter. I'm just going to chop it in sections and then let the heat from the potatoes just melt the butter. It shouldn't take too long. While the butter is melting into the potatoes, I grabbed my hot pad because the timer's ticking down, the meatloaf is about to come out of the oven, and I tell you what, the smell in here right now is just over the top. It is hot, bubbling. We're gonna set the meatloaf to the side. <laughs> like I said, it smells awesome. Pains me that I have to wait to eat this till later on tonight. Maybe I'll sneak a bite, we'll see what happens. The meatloaf is still bubbling hot, it slices a lot better if you let it cool off a while before you cut it. We're gonna head back to the potatoes. We're gonna add half of the milk into that. We're gonna take a potato masher and just start going to town on the potatoes. That potato masher did a pretty good job, but we're going to use an electric mixer just to finish it off to make sure all those little chunks are eliminated. We're gonna add in a cup of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise makes things wonderful. It's like pop quiz, a BLT sandwich. What is the most important part? The correct answer is the mayonnaise. You can't have a BLT without mayonnaise. Apparently not mashed potatoes either. We're gonna put in two teaspoons of garlic powder. And two teaspoons of salt. And then we're gonna start mixing again. The mayonnaise, the salt, the garlic powder all has to get mixed in real good. One very important step in all of this is that you keep tasting it just to make sure it's got enough garlic powder and salt. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. I bet someone else out there has a fond memory of cooking with their mom and licking off the mixing attachment after she was done. So I'm gonna do that. But please, if you're enjoying these episodes, please push that like button, comment down below, tell me if you've made this for your family and how you liked it. I'll see you next time.